Yeah, thanks for having me. I've, I'm really excited to do this today. Um, my name's Sachin. I'm a transformational coach, so I use spiritual concepts to help people create peace of mind. But a lot of what I do is creative focus. So like for almost two years, I was writing a daily blog, posting daily YouTube videos, uh, did podcasts twice a week. And I was just doing a lot of creative works, uh, making thumbnails is a big part of that. And a lot of what I was doing uh, in the beginning, I wasn't familiar with the creative process and I would get creative blocks. Ooh. How, hands up, anyone had a creative block in their life? Nah. Nah, oh, <laughs> dude, teach me. <laughs> You know, what it's, you know what it's like, you open a, a blank page of something and it's just daunting as hell. And you look at it like, what do I do now? And I used to have this moment where I would be sitting on the laptop and just be like, well, I have to make something today, but I don't know what I'm going to write about. Or I don't know what is going to accurately reflect what I want to say. And then just second guessing and judging and all of, it's exhausting. It, you know, when you, when you have a creative blog, you're looking for, okay, maybe I'll go for a walk that might clear my head. I, went, I probably walked like five miles. Did it solve anything? No, my legs just got tired. How is that going to help me create? It's not. Well, maybe it does. We, we haven't decided yet. But one of the major things that I've seen that's helped me create just consistently without thinking too much about it is just that, escaping the thinking mind. So if what, when I say thinking mind, what comes to mind for people? Anyone got the, the monkey in the cage trying to, trying to get out of there? Anyone? No, not just me, probably. I get like, you know, hamster on a wheel type syndrome where I'm like, okay, there's one thought, then follow the next one. Follow. And it's exhausting. This process is what's crippling our creativity. So one of the main things that's helped me to could be a lot more zen, relaxed, not sweating so much, is meditation. Anyone ever meditated in here? Cool. So meditation is like, it gets a lot of... Uh, connotations to it. People would think that it's a certain thing like you have to sit with your legs crossed and be zened out and not think about anything for hours on end. And that's just not realistic, especially with the environments that we're living in today. Who's, who here has got time to sit for three hours and not do anything? Anyone? No. Well, I'll, I'll, if someone puts their hand up, I'd really like to ask you about that, but maybe later. I, I really get down with the idea of modern meditation, which is you could stand for 10 seconds with your eyes closed or even just walking outside and smelling the air, getting a real tuning into the body to get a real sense of what it's like to be here rather than in here. The, that mind, that thinking mind is what's distracting us from all of the, what we want in the present moment. And in the present, that's where you're going to create. And any, anyone from now, could you go back to yesterday and create something? Anyone? No? Oh, okay, cool. So... I know that for all of us, being present is what's going to help us to create better and create more. And by better, it doesn't mean uh, this piece is better than this piece on a comparison basis. Better creation means more fluid, more flowing, and less of that judgment, less of that thinking mind. So any, any of this uh, creative flow that we have is coming from us being here. If you, has anyone ever made something they were really proud of while they were trying to do a million other things? That's beautiful, because if, if you did, I, I, again, I want to ask questions about that. But this, this is a very powerful part of what I have found out for myself. Being present every day, it's a nice little fluff thing that we hear about, oh, just be in the now and everything's going to be great. That's beautiful, but a lot of us can't commit so much time to downtime or zenning out. And, you know, it's impractical to take drugs in the workplace and that kind of stuff. I'm definitely not encouraging that. And that's what I was being encouraged to do when I was young. I make music. And uh, everyone said to me, yeah, we want to get in that vibe, we want to get in the zone. Let's just smoke a bunch of weed. And I'm like, I've got to drive my car after this. I'm going to be falling asleep on the damn motorway. What the hell's going on here? So in order to escape these prejudgments and this conditioning of it needs to be something else that's going to stimulate that creativity, it's already in here. This is not like we need to go and outsource it to someone else. We've already came into the world with everything we needed. This is the most sophisticated piece of technology on the planet. So if we learn how to tune into it and tap into it, your creative overflowing fountain becomes abundant and everyone else can benefit from that. So let's look at one of the ways. I asked you if any of you have meditated. Beautiful to see that some of you have. But in a modern form of meditation, it's very simple. If, 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 feel free to join me if you would like to. If you close your eyes and just start in through the nose, real deep, like deep, deep as you can. Imagine you've got a bottomless pit in your stomach and you're trying to fill that with air, trying to, trying to get the, trying to get all the uplifting energy in there. 
and hold that. Breathe from the diaphragm and feel it. You're drawing the air in. And you can breathe out through the mouth slowly. Release it in a sigh if that feels good for you. Make sure your mouth's open. And what we're doing is we're allowing the free flow of air without being obstructed. Most of the time we're, both, we're, we're breathing because we've got stuff to do. You're on the phone. You ain't got time to and then reply. And that's what's stimulating your fight or flight or freeze response. So in order to get away from that, what's that going to do for us? If we're breathing short and sharp and shallow, what's that really doing for you? It's putting you in that state of fear. It's putting you in that state of, oh, I don't have enough, uh, something's going on here, I'm feeling cagey inside. We want to get out of that scarcity mentality, which doesn't really serve you. It's, all it's doing is making you focus on what you don't have. When we breathe consciously, like the way we've just done, you can feel it. You're not, you're not striving, you're not like you know, clambering around for more air. You're not trying to crack open these windows. You've got an abundance of air. And that's where it starts all in the mind. Breathing centers us to be here. When you're breathing in this conscious way, you can then start to access this abundance thinking. Because you're, again, you're not stimulating that fight or flight response. There's no reason to be cagey or panicked. You're breathing enough air. It's, in, it's inside already. We, we don't need anything else. That's the first form, is conscious breathing. It's very simple. You don't, you don't have to have your eyes closed. You don't have to sit on a, on a, a, on a little cushion and, and have some nice music on. You don't have to do any of that. You don't have to go, you know Regent's Park, they've got that little, nice little Japanese park. You don't have to go all the way there. You can sit here. You bring all of that in you here. The second part we're going to look at is visualization. Anyone ever done visualization? Awesome. So it's, you know that you can create those visual patterns in your mind. So... I'll invite you again, if you would like to, close your eyes. And I want you to project into a future where the greatest, most creative version of yourself lives. What does that version of you look like? What are you creating in that moment? Are you drawing something? Are you taking a picture? Are you editing a video? Are you using Photoshop? Put yourself in that position and really have a look at what you're creating in front of you. How easy is it to create? How, much, how less stressed are you being in this creative flow state? The greatest and most creative version of you is already in your mind. It already exists. When we come back to today, the only difference between you now and you in this future that you imagine yourself in is what you choose to do with this moment. That version of you that you just imagined, you wouldn't be able to imagine it if it didn't exist. You wouldn't be able to imagine it if your mind couldn't conceive that. And anything the mind can conceive, we can achieve. That's why I like the rhyming quotes. But this, this whole concept that I'm hitting at here is everything we need is already inside of us. So one of my favorite quotes of all time is, how can I do drugs if I am drugs? We're made up of all of these chemicals we're looking at on the outside. Anyone ever done drugs in this room? Okay, that might be a private conversation. <laughs> I, that was a joke, don't worry. I wasn't expecting anyone to put their hand up. But look, yeah, I've got experience in that realm. I'm sure, I'm not going to point any fingers, but I'm sure some of us do as well. That whole idea of needing something external to create, it's already inside of us. So we can cut out the middle, man. We don't need to call anyone up and say, can you be here in five minutes? We're already here. There's no need for the delay. And this visualization can put you in that mind frame of, I'm already in my creative flow. I don't need anything external. The, second, the third part of the modern meditation that I like to teach is simply, I'll show you right now. Just sit down. You're, we're already doing it now. Just be quiet. Literally, you, you'll be astounded with stillness. When stillness enters, a web, sorry, when we enter a state of stillness, we're not occupying ourselves with all of the BS that usually takes up our mind. Derek's on the phone, he's got girlfriend problems. Oh, uh, Monica, the printer's broken, what can we do about it? When you enter a state of stillness regularly throughout the day, and this could be 30 seconds, it could be five seconds. When you come back to stillness, you're inviting more opportunities to create. Because what, what do we do when we create? It's making something from nothing. You've got the blank piece of paper in front of you, what happened? Is there some magical miracle that we're, ra we're waiting for? No. It's already inside of us. It's in here and in here. All we need to do is access it. And that state of stillness is one of my favorite things to do because it's not complicated. And anyone can do it. I've taught meditation to the six-year-olds. They are, okay, they're way more in tune with presence because they don't understand what time is. But we can get back to that. When we were young, 
Hands up who was creating when they were young, when they were a child. What is this? If you feel free to shout some stuff out, what were you creating? Drawing? Anyone drawing? Drawings, paintings. Paintings. Tree video. Houses. Tree houses. Whoa, I wish I was doing that. That's cool. <laughs> we need to have a chat later on. I need to find out. Um, that, that whole state of when you're young, you don't have a lot of the, uh, I'll call it conditioning for lack of a better term. We don't have a lot of these stresses on our minds, this conditioning that says, okay, you always need to be doing something. The word is doing. But we're not humans doing, we're human beings. You're just being yourself, you're being human, you're being in that moment in time. When you're young, there is no such thing as anything other than being until it gets imposed on you, but that's a creative talk for another time. What I'm hitting at here is entering that state of, I am just being. I have childlike curiosity of what's going to come out of me in this interaction. Me interacting with the paintbrush, with the drawing equipment, what's going to happen here? Entering with that state of curiosity. And this helps with not judging our work. Hands up who's ever judged their work and said this is terrible. Wow, okay. That, thanks for the honesty. Uh, that, you know, that, that's a hard question to answer. And this comes on to the next part. Ego. Any, anyone not familiar with the term? Cool. So we all understand that ego can get in the way of what we're doing. And what I mean specifically is that coming from ego means coming from a place of I need to be anything other than what I am right now. Your resting state when you're just being is not coming from ego. When you're eating your lunch right now, anyone in their mind right now thinking, I need to eat this sandwich in a certain way so that people perceive me in a certain way. Anyone thinking that? That's beautiful. It means you're eating not coming from ego. Your eating is just to nourish your body. And if we look at our creative work in the same way, it's nourishing your soul. You can't find this energy that you're, see, that you're putting out anywhere else in the world. It's coming from you. And when we come from that place of being in that moment, such as when we were children, it eliminates the need for judgment. That need for judgment is coming from, I need to make this something in the eyes of someone else. Now, when we're creating with an intention to work with other people, yes, parts of that come in. But the ego gets involved when it's not good enough by our own standards. But what does that even mean? By good enough by our standards, is, is it an accurate reflection of me, my skills, how I feel about this project? That's, that's what we're hitting at. But then other ideas come, in, uh, come into it. Maybe there's money involved. Maybe there's uh, attractive people of, the, of whatever our preference is involved with. Maybe they'll perceive me if I say a certain way or if I present myself a certain way. There's lots and lots and lots of opportunities for ego to involve itself with the creative process. And it serves us. I'm definitely not of the opinion that ego is bad. It's a part of us and we need to learn to love it and accept it and use it as the tool it is. Now look at it like it's a power drill, right? Anyone ever seen a child with a power drill? I have. It's horrible. It's the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. I thought I was going to die. He's running around screaming and pointing this power drill at people and going, mm, mm, and I was like, whoa, where's your dad? We need, to, we need to sort this out. And I saw the child with the power drill before and after we educated them about what the power drill does. The power drill could be used for construction or destruction. It's the same with all powerful tools. Anyone here got a laptop? Cool. You know that there's productive stuff you can do with your laptop, right? And there's not so productive stuff. Anyone ever found themselves on YouTube for like three hours after realizing like I only wanted to be here for like 10 minutes? I, 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 I fall down the rabbit hole sometimes of like conspiracies and stuff. I'm not gonna lie, I do it too, it's fun. And sometimes I just get interested in things. One time I, f I was watching um, this documentary on how uh, they get the decking, uh, you, know, you know decking on um, outside areas, how they get the ridges in. I was like, why? I don't even care about this. Why do I care about these ridges? And after like half an hour, I was like, wow, that was really strange. And I felt really bad afterwards. But it's a prime example of how the tool can be used for destruction. And that, in that circumstance that I described, is the destruction of my creative flow. What can we do to prevent that from happening? You get education of yourself. So, okay, I'm, I, me personally, I'm way more inclined to do the deep dive on silly things that don't even matter to my life when I'm putting judgment on what I should be doing. Anyone ever been shoulded on in their life? I know it's not sounding like what you think it is. Should is a very dangerous word. When, we, when I was doing my coaching course, they told us about should and can't. 
as the only two swear words we're not allowed to use on the course. Other than that, they're good. And this shoulding, shoulding on yourself, it sounds like the, the not so nice thing that we got in our minds. When you should on yourself, you're, deli you're deliberating. You're trying to make something be something else according to an expectation. The expectation creates disappointment. So again, we're creating something other than what we actually want. Is this making sense so far? Anyone, not, anyone got any questions so far? Cool. So as another thing I want to talk about is expectation versus reality. You know, they do those, um, those before and after, no, no, not before, those thumbnails, um, like uh, fashion blogger, expectation versus reality. And, you know, the, the, re the expectation is like, oh, we're going into the Hilton and everyone's dressed up. Nice. The reality is like I'm sitting in my laptop in my underwear, like trying to make sure I write this blog post. It's, it's very similar to how we behave when it comes to creative uh, expe expectation. We're expecting it to feel right. Anyone ever felt like I can't create because I don't feel it right now? Anyone had that? I've had that a bunch of times. And the only thing I realize is I'm in control of how I feel. So if I need to feel in a certain state to create an accurate reflection of how I see the world, how am I going to get into that state? And this is all about how you, how you function. How you function? It's all about how you behave for yourself. Self-care, self-love, routines like this. I got my hairs done. I got my beard shaped up because it's not just for fun. It's not just because, oh, yeah, other people will like it. It's a self-care routine. Hygiene. I don't, you know, maybe it gets glossed over. I'm not really sure. I don't really hear people talking about hygiene when it comes to creative flow. I'm not sure why. And uh, when I used to be in the studio with my friend, he would say, oh, yeah, I don't shower because it makes my music better. <laughs> I don't know if the BO can suddenly, like, infuse with the computer. I, I don't know if that works. I, I don't think it does because everyone else in the studio said he stinks and we don't want to work with him. But this brings up a very good point. How do you feel comfortable when you create? So if we go back to the visualization of you in the future, how does you in the future, in your prime creative state, how are, how are you functioning? Have you had a haircut? Have you had a shower that morning? Are you eating an orange? For me, it's pineapple. But whatever your thing is, having routines and practices in place very much impacts how you show up in the world. It doesn't just mean with creativity. It's with relationships. It's with children. It's with family. It's with work. It's with play. It's with everything we do. If we are showing up in an empowered state of, I've already taken care of my needs today. I'm good right now. You know, I believe in this, pro uh, I believe in this concept called pro -noia. Has anyone ever heard of it? Cool. pro -noia. It's the opposite of paranoia. Paranoia is, oh my God, everyone's out to get me. Someone help me. pro is the opposite. Like, oh, everyone's out to do good for me. The universe is conspiring to help me. And the reason, I, the reason this resonates with me so much is because I have a lot of traumatic stuff going on in the past and oh my God, it was so bad. Understanding why these things were necessary to help you grow today. And my favorite example is my friend, he got run over by a car. It's not as bad as it sounds. And um, afterwards, you know, he was feeling sorry for himself and my friend slapped him in the face. And we were all like, what? You just got hit by a car and now you slap me, what, what's going on? He said, this is why you don't succeed in life. And everyone in the room shut up, and including me, which is very rare. I like to talk. But this, this was very powerful because usually we'd look at someone in that state and feel like, oh, you know, let's, let's help them. This is really bad. What can we do? And instead, someone just came up and slapped him in the face and said, how dare you complain? How dare you look at your situation as though you're going through some sort of suffering that is you know, of paramount importance? There's people on the other side of the planet who can't even leave their houses because they get scared, their fear of getting bombed. There's people on the, in, our, in the area here who don't have homes to go to. And you're crying about, my leg hurts. I, can't, I have to go crutches to Tesco. Now, they, we, when we put perspective on what's going on for us, then we start to move into a more empowered state. And that is where you create your best work. And I want to touch on this best work idea as well. Again, it's another expectation. If we say, I'm going to sit here and it's just going to flow and I'm going to come out with the best stuff I've ever made, it rarely ever goes like that. Again, we're imposing a restriction and or limitation on the reality that we're experiencing right now. If you have those ideas of what it should be when you write, when you draw, when you paint, when you take pictures, when you're editing, when you have that expectation of my best work is going to come out, 
suddenly you imposing restriction on what could possibly come out that might be a reinvention of your best work. And of course, I'm not saying that we shouldn't, we shouldn't strive for creating our best work. I'm saying, why don't we be endlessly curious about what comes out anyway? And it's that curiosity that leads to creating new styles. Anyone here like drum and bass? Nice, my people. I'm cool talking to you all afterwards. Uh, that's my favorite genre of music. And when I was young, I used to love jungle music as well. And these two types of music resonate with me on a heart level. Like as soon as I hear it, I've got to take some clothes off, I've got to start dancing, I've got to do something, I've got to start moving around. And this would never have come about if someone didn't pick up on, hmm, I like the tempo of 175 to 180. I also like this pattern. That would never have come about if they had the idea of, okay, I need to make a jungle track or I need to make this type of beat. It would never have come about. It comes about when we experiment. And experimentation means just going to see what happens, see what, see what comes out here. That practice of exploring your own creator, creator, creatorosity, that might be a new word. I'm going to I'm gonna have to put a pin in that. Um, yeah, exploring our own curiosity when it comes to creativity leads to you being comfortable with what your style is, developing new styles alongside that. And that's another thing. How many of you think that you have a distinct style that you're, you're great at? Anyone? Distinct styles that we feel that we're great at comes from the repetition, the practice, and exploring what is my style. You know, we, we all do it today. Everyone's wearing clothes, right? Everyone's put their outfit together. Would you say that that's your style? That's, that style that you conduct yourself in is how you show up in the world. And if you look at your creative, uh, if you look at your creative expression as that's your style, you could start experimenting with different styles. Maybe you put the blue jeans with the pink hat and then you apply that to whatever your creative process is. Maybe you start taking pictures in a different way. Maybe you start using the selfie cam in a different way. I, I'm not really too well versed in that. I don't like selfies, but that's another story for another time. This is, this is the main thing that I feel has really helped me getting rid of expectations, being more present, exploring creativity and cur with curiosity, understanding that there is no such thing as the perfect work. Anyone here ever told that you know, your, your work is perfect? This is, this is not a bad thing, because perfect, again, it's implying restriction, it's implying limitation, it's putting it in a box and saying, if it doesn't take these little categories here, it's not perfect. And that's very different to fitting a brief. That's very different to achieving the guidelines that we've set out for this work. It's very different. When we say this has got to be perfect, I've got to get it right, again, it's imposing more of that restriction. Does anyone have any questions before I move on? Cool. So from this, or, or I would like to ask anyone, what, what are you getting from this conversation? I'm standing up here, I'm making a lot of noise, I'm moving my hands a lot. Anyone getting anything helpful or valuable right now, raise your hand. Thank you. As I appreciate the honesty. If you're not, that's cool as well. This, uh, that's, that, the reason I ask that is because everyone's got their own preference. Some people might prefer me to sit like this with my hands like, hey guys, would you like to talk about creativity today? Some people might prefer that. But for me personally, oh sorry, for me personally, I know that what style works for me, how I express myself. And if that's a big part of expectation, if we're looking to please others in any area of our lives, if we're looking to please others, it's an inauthentic expression of ourselves. And I want to come on to the, ma the main thing that's helped me in all of my journey, getting rid of negative people. Has anyone ever done this in their life? Anyone ever removed people from their lives? Anyone? Show of hands. Let's, let's own these hands because this is a bit... Congratulations, you in the back as well. I know, look, I'm feeling the liberation right now because I know how good it feels to get rid of that draining, toxic energy. Anyone ever have one of them friends? You're on the phone for a bit and then after like half an hour, you're like, God, all you've done is complain, man. I'm trying to cook this meal. I'm trying... You're just drained. Why? Why are we allowing ourselves to be drained? Do you think anyone think that's helping your creative flow? Let's have a look around. No one's put their hand up. So why are we doing it? We're entertaining the BS because of what? We're entertaining things because of expectation. And it's not, a, it's not an expectation of our own. It's imposed from others. Oh, uh, you need to pick me up from the airport because we've been friends for seven years. 
maybe that's the end of our friendship. I don't know. You're implying a restriction and limitation on me. How am I going to create from an empowered state if I'm sitting here thinking, well, Sandra needs me to talk to her about how Derek's not showing up for her. He's not doing it. I don't care. Like, that's not my problem. And neither is my creative problem. That's not their problem either. Again, everyone has got expectations or, sorry, Everyone has expectations imposed on them in some way, shape, or form. And it doesn't mean expectations are bad. I've got the expectation to put clothes on when I leave the house. I think that's nice. And I'm not trying to change that. And we've also got expectations of don't steal. Don't kill people. Don't do certain things that are going to damage society. That's beautiful. Where the expectation stops is the three most disempowering words on the planet. And anyone want to guess? Don't all jump at once. No, I'm joking. The, get, the words are, I have to. Anyone ever told you, let's get a show of hands. Anyone ever told you, you have to do this? <laughs> this, is, this is different to the expectation of I have to being imposed on you is very different for different situations. When we look at the workplace, of course, there's things that we're going to do. We're here to do a certain task. But when we show up in other areas of our lives, why do we have to? Why do I have to talk to you? If, uh, why do I have to come to your birthday? By the way, I don't believe in birthdays, but that's a story for another time. I don't believe that this is significant for me. I don't believe that I have to wear red on certain days. I don't believe I have Father's Day and Mother... What's that all about? For, for me, personally. And if other people want to do that, that's great. But these expectations of I have to are limiting our lives. I, I'm, I'm Indian, right? And I do this because I don't believe in race, but that's another story for another time. I'm Indian culture mentality, right? It's been imposed on me my whole life. And I had the expectation of, I've got to spend eight hours a day, every day for four weeks during this wedding period of my summer. I ain't getting none of that summer back. When I was 14, 16, 17, I'm not getting any of those summers back because I had to be there. Because it looks bad. Because you are this certain way. You fit this demographic. You fit in this little box. Now you have to act this way. That's damaging our creativity. It's ruining our flow state of empowerment. It's ruining your chances of showing up in the world powerfully and saying, I'm here. What's going on? But instead, it's, uh, I'm here. Thanks, guys. I look really good now. Let's take pictures and pretend we're all happy. I don't want to do that. Anyone else want to pretend that they're happy when they're not? Anyone? Maybe, maybe it works for some people. I don't know. But for me, it definitely didn't work. And I'm not getting down like that ever again. I can't. Why would I do that to myself? This coming back to the point of self-love, self-care. It's more than just this little fluff pink quotes that you see on Tumblr and stuff with the nice text. It actually means something when you apply it to your life. When you look at yourself, say, like, do I love myself enough to prioritize how I feel today? If I don't feel like talking to this person, why would I do that? When you show up for yourself, Powerfully, as though you're showing up as a loved one, someone who treats you like a queen, prince, princess, whatever you want to be treated as. If you show up for yourself in that way, you're not waiting for someone else to complete you. You look for others to complement you. And this comes in all areas of life, relationships, creativity. If you're working with someone collaboratively on a project, but you don't really like their approach or style, would you compromise and not even say anything about it and just say, well, we have to... This, this, again, is limitation. Instead of having an open and honest conversation with that person, say, well, actually, Derek, I think this would look better. What do you think? But instead of that, we're imposing the limitation. Oh, yeah, you know, we'll just do this because it's, it's easy. It's here now. We, we can just do that. It's fine. This is all about how we show up for ourselves, and that directly impacts how we show up for others and what we do in the world. And I'll go back to my first point. The change that you seek Everyone's seeking something. Everyone is here to do something. We're all working, we're all living for a reason. And the reason is going to be different for all of us. But how are you going to do that? How are you going to create those changes you seek if you're not actually here? If your mind is always outside? If it's always about, oh, I, you know, I wore this tie, but I don't know if Jennifer likes it. Why does it matter? That means we're not actually here. We're not showing up with the, well, I'm not wearing a tie, but that's, you know, let's not talk about that. I'm not showing up with the expectation of, I need this person to like me. I need them to get down with my style. I need, I need, I need. Instead of operating from I need, we can operate from I have. Take inventory right now. Everyone, let's, let's close our eyes or however you feel comfortable. Take inventory of what you like about yourself the best. 
I'll, I'll, you know, you could list something, you know, maybe you like your hair, maybe you like your glasses, the way you dress, the, your sense of humor, you know, the way you, you make f people feel comfortable around you. Maybe it's your ability to connect with people. Maybe it's you don't even, you don't care about any of the things that other people seem to care about, which takes a lot of their time and energy. Maybe you want to celebrate the things that make you unique and the things you love about yourself. I would invite everyone to include a gratitude practice in their lives. And I'll tell you what mine cons consists of. Every day I open two gifts, my eyes. Some people can't see, that's a beautiful gift. Every day I say, I woke up with shelter over my head, food on my plate and clothes on my back. That's a lot more than a, a lot of other people on this planet have. And this is what, if we start your day off with appreciating what you already have and you show up from that place of, I'm good. What's going, what's going to happen now? We're showing up curious, endlessly passionate about what we're creating with our lives. This point that I'm pressing home relentlessly is so important for all of us, regardless of what walk of life we come from. Whether it's creating work here with, with your laptop, whether it's creating a relationship with your soul and your heart space, whether it's creating ideas about what you could do with your life or what you could help others with. It all comes from the same place. You can't create anything outside of here right now. So I would invite you all to create something beautiful today. And that doesn't have to be some major grandiose masterpiece that you want to gesture to the world and say, I spent nine years on this. It doesn't have to be. You could create something beautiful with the way you walk, with the way you interact with someone. I, do, I, tried this my, I try my hardest to do this as regularly as possible. I will sit with a homeless person. I'll ask them about their life. I'll treat them like a human being so I can create a beautiful interaction for that person and myself so I can learn from them. They can feel like they've been acknowledged. This is examples of how you create every single day. There's never a time where we're not creating. And this is why the creative blocks don't exist. It's a, another imposition. It's another form of us telling ourselves something that's never going to be true. If you looked at yourself in the mirror and say, oh, I can't create anything today. You went and made yourself, you poured the milk into the cereal no one could have done it the way you did it. You created that. It was unique to you. The way you walked up to the milk or almond milk and you poured it in. The way you stirred the cornflakes up and maybe you put a bit of sugar in there. No one else did it the way you did it. Maybe, you know that mean, the, the guy's doing that. I, I can't really do it well, but he like picked up the pinch of salt and done that. Maybe that's the way you create your cereal. But if you show up and you take inventory of what you've created already today, it gets rid of those blocks because you acknowledge you're already creating. There's no thing that we're waiting for to suddenly spark the inspiration. Oh, there it is. And that's not to say that doesn't happen. It's to suggest that we don't need it to happen. That makes sense. Anyone got any questions so far? I feel like I've been just like speaking at you guys instead of speaking with. So I'd like to encourage you to do this. I will ask everyone a question and I will just shout out if you feel, feel, if you feel compelled to answer. I want to know, why do you create? And I'll, if no one answers, I'm going to pick on someone, if that's cool. Anyone? Okay, can I get, have, uh, my friend in the back, can I ask you? Do I create? Because um, I've been doing it a long time, I think I'm okay at it. Mm. <laughs> How does it make you feel when you create? It's fun, it's exciting, you kind of like, you learn new things. Mm. Can you give me an example of the last thing you learned while you were creating? Um... We've, we've, we've just done a project for um, an alcohol brand and it's been a big part of that to do with innovation and learn a totally new way to make alcohol and it's just the kind of things you come to work and you don't expect to kind of gain random bits of information like that kind of keeps your brain firing. Yeah, and how did it feel for you to get that insight to see that you, to learn something new? You just felt slightly better. Mm. Beautiful, I love that. And this is a prime example of why creativity is so beneficial. You can take lessons from everything you see. Everything that you experience on a daily basis is changing you, it's molding you. Like, um, I can't remember who said it, but they said um, like humans are, when you're young, you're like clay, easily moldable, and that as you grow up, it's like the clay starts to solidify. But we don't have to let that happen. When it starts to solidify, again, it's restricting your movement. If the clay is freely moldable, uh, in, in science they call it neuroplasticity, your brain pathways, if they're flexible, 
if they're open, if you're open to new experiences, it shows. People who are depressed, like I was many years ago, we're depressed because we're having a similar experience every single day. There's no innovation there. There's no new thoughts. There's no, oh, I've done, you know, I went on a roller coaster today, that was beautiful. No, it's every day is the same thing. It feels like I'm grinding against the ground. But when you introduce new experiences into your life, it increases the plasticity of those pathways in your mind, which makes us less likely to revert back to the past, to experience it again and let that get in the way. Anyone ever had a difficult experience in their past? How many of you think about that experience at least once a week? How beautiful would it be if that experience didn't come up for you in the same way that it has been, in the same negative association we have with it? And the only thing that we can do, can't go back to yesterday, and you can turn back the hands of time on your watch, but it ain't going to do nothing to outside. The sun's still going to be up. If you look at your past experiences and you reframe it, you change your frame of reference, you change the way you see it, Pronoia comes back in, and like, oh, happened for my growth. That's beautiful. But it's not as simple as that. But understanding when it's coming up for you in the moment, understanding what that experience is reminding you of. Me, personally, I have lots of, lots. I've got a, a pick and mix bag full of those traumatic experiences. And I can pick up one of them and just divulge into the negativity. Or I can use it as an example of why I'm grateful today of why this is so important for me, of why I love to do what I do every single day. So I would invite you all, have a think about that negative experience. If you want to close your eyes, definitely do it. And I'm not, we're obviously I'm bringing you into the darkness right now, but we're going to come back up to the light, don't worry about it. Have a think about why that experience was hard for you. What did you feel like? How did it feel in your stomach, in your chest, in your eyes? Like for me, my eyes get sore. How did it feel? And why? Why did it affect you in that way? And then think about how good things are today compared to that. We're here right now. There's no stress. There's no, there's not, nothing, you know, there's no imminent danger that we're in. There's nothing. This moment in time is pure bliss if we allow ourselves to access it. This is, a lot of what I've said is Buddhist philosophy. A lot of what I've said is personal experience. But every one of us is completely different. So my main thing is you got to find what works for you. I would definitely love to invite you all to ask me any questions. Feel free if I'm standing around. I'll be here for a little while. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you all today. I know it's been a bit... I'm, I speak very fast. So you might have been expecting like an hour or so. I'm like a thousand miles an hour. So I would really like, I would love to speak with you all individually, if that's cool with you. If you feel compelled to, please ask me some questions. I'll be here. Thank you all so much for listening and I uh, hope you all have a creative and fun day.